So if you're like me, you probably waste hours or even days stuck in mental loops of overthinking. Do you get lost in analyzing the overwhelming variables that go into making a decision that at the end of the day, you're pretty much taxed mentally and emotionally drained? Well, the truth is you're not alone. Overanalyzing causes paralysis by analysis and it is very stressful. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna give you three tips to help you stop overanalyzing everything. Why can I speak about this? Well, it's because I'm an overthinker too, and I've been rather challenged by this lately, so I decided to nip it in the bud, do some research, and get these tips to help you and to help me. So let's dive in. Tip number one is to take control of your emotions. One of the biggest issues with overthinkers is our emotions hijack our brain and we begin to spiral out of control. Instead, when an emotion hits you, don't freak out. Take a deep breath and welcome the emotion. See it as nothing more than a feeling or a thought. When you see your emotions as just thoughts, they won't really spiral out of control. They don't take control of you. Let me give you an example. When I competed in my first Ironman race, I was terrified of swimming. And I had to swim in the Tempe Town Lake here in Phoenix, Arizona, which if you know Tempe Town Lake, it's nasty, stinks to high heaven, and I've heard that strange things like alligators lurk in its depths. So when I was in my first race, the gun went off and I dove into that murky water. I got kicked, grabbed, punched, and slapped by the more experienced competitors, and immediately my emotions took over. Then I started to think about the latest episode of River Monsters that I had just watched, and that was when I about lost it. And the more I swam, the more out of breath I was, and the worse it got. I thought about giving up, and it, it all came to a head, but then I remembered what one of my experienced friends, uh, triathletes, told me, don't freak out, float. And so that's what I did. I turned over, floated on my back for a couple minutes, I collected my thoughts, gathered my emotions, woo sod a little bit, and I finished the race. See, when we take a chill pill, when our, our emotions are all haywire, we recognize our emotions, we're able to then move on and end up in a better place, just like I did in my race. Tip number two is go with your gut and your brain. So your intuition is more powerful than you'd think. So in other words, going with your gut sometimes might be the best solution, except you don't wanna go with your gut if you're in a highly emotional and reactive state. That is a bad thing to do. Instead, we need to pair our brain with our gut to make better, faster, and more accurate decisions. So one study that I found showed that 25% of car buyers who used careful analysis were happy with their purchase, so 25%. While those who made an intuitive approach, intuitive purchase with their gut and their brain were happy 60% of the time. Now this is not an emotional decision, a gut reaction. This is intuitive, allowing your brain and your gut to work together for rapid cognition. Just take the emotions out of something and you will tap into the gut brain. One really quick way to thin slice your decision making is to ask your future self how you'll feel about a decision 10 weeks, 10 months, and 10 years from now. This is just kind of a simple way to listen to your gut within the boundaries of three time periods, and it can be very helpful if done correctly. And last but not least, tip number three, schedule your worry break. So have you heard of the Parkinson's law? It's basically, it basically says that our work expands the time that we allow it. So if you have one month to finish a project, it's gonna take you one month. But if you have three days to finish the exact same project, it'll take you three days. It's weird how that works. Here's what I'm getting at. Overthinking expands the time that we allow it. We simply waste too much time worrying or overthinking because we don't give ourselves overthinking boundaries. We just worry the day away, or at least I do. I, I know I'm guilty of that. So how do we curb our appetite of relentless and uncontrolled overthinking? Here's some research for you. One good tip from Melody Wilding, author of Trust Yourself, Stop Overthinking, and Channel Your Emotions for Success at Work, describes in a Harvard Business Review article that I read to schedule worry breaks on your calendar. What a great idea. Where you earmark a specific time, about 15 to 20 minutes, to focus on your energy on a list of worries but you have to do it constructively. So you make a list of your worries, you take this list and do the following. Number one is revisit the list of concerns you've written down and just identify which ones are no longer relevant. You may notice that some have resolved themselves or they no longer nag at you. Immediately cross those off your list and give yourself a positive boost and a little pat on the back 
for being resourceful and cap more capable than you originally assumed. Step number two is to next go through that list and circle only the remaining worries you can control, control your controllables, whether taking an action or changing your mindset about a situation. And last but not least, step, step number three, and this is take the items you circled one by one, write them down and brainstorm five solutions to that situation. And then think creatively on how you can solve that. Think creatively. So now what you've done is you've taken that list and you've really honed down on how you can solve that. Well, there you have it. Three tips to stop overthinking. I know this can be a challenge for some of us. It's a big challenge for me, but I'm sure these tips will help you get out of your own head and get going on the goals that you have in mind. So hey, thanks for stopping by our channel. If you want more content like this to help you become the greatest leadership version of yourself and advance your career, then hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week.